Welcome to the introduction of the new Dell cross-platform replication feature. This feature simply allows for asynchronous replication between the PS series and SE series array. This is the first of a four-part video series. In this video, we will introduce cross-platform replication, the new Dell Storage Manager, and we will also demonstrate how to configure iSCSI connections for replication. In the other videos, we will demonstrate how to replicate a PS series volume to an SE series array, and we will also demonstrate the failover of that volume to the SE series array, and then we will fail back to the original replication relationship on the PS series array. Core to the architecture for cross-platform replication is the Dell Storage Manager. This is the user interface that's twofold. First, it will consolidate multiple user interfaces, such as the Equalogic or PS Series Group Manager GUI, as well as the Compellent or SE Series Enterprise Manager GUI. Once we add the two platforms into the Dell Storage Manager, we can application interface into those different platforms, allowing us to enable cross-platform replication. Day-to-day -day operations will also be available through the DSM for both the PS Series and SE Series. The PS Series Group Manager GUI will still be available, however, cross-platform replication will require management and setup through the DSM. Now, both storage platforms have synchronous and asynchronous replication features. However, for this discussion, we will focus on asynchronous replication, since this is the method used by cross-platform replication. Now, the PS series asynchronous replication is between two groups and is tied to a volume pair. The graphic below shows several groups, each with a separate volume pair. The SE series replication model is similar with additional flexibility. Not only may volume pairs be replicated, but also multi-hop scenarios are supported, such as the graphic indicates with volume 2 replicating between SE series 1, 3, and 4, or the multi-point scenario where we have volume 1 replicating from SE series 1 to SE series 4, and also to SE series 2. Now, for cross-platform replication, we'll simply have the volume pair either between the PS series and SE or the SE series and the PS array. Now for this first video series, we're going to just demonstrate the PS series volume to the SE series relationship. Now for cross-platform replication, there are a few requirements. You will need the required firmware for the PS series, that's version 9, the SE series, that's 701, and then you also need the Dell Storage Manager, which is going to be the first release, 2016 R1. Cross-platform replication, there's really no extra license needed. However, there is a requirement for the SE series array to have the asynchronous replication license. Now, some of the limitations, as we mentioned, this is asynchronous replication only over iSCSI, and it's not available for the SE series 2000. Now, for the PS series to the SE series, here's some steps, and we're going to demonstrate it in two videos. The first video, we're going to walk through the Dell Storage Manager, show you how to add PS series and SE series storage. And then we're going to also configure the iSCSI connectivity between those two arrays. And then in the later video, the second video, we will set up the volume for replication. And then we will replicate or sync that volume up with the replicate now feature. Let's go ahead and start and launch the Dell Storage Manager and add storage. Now, first we'll launch the Dell Storage Manager. It is a Windows application, and since the application includes a, a client and a data collector, there are two methods to log in. First, we could actually log into the SC series array itself. That would be given the IP address of that array, or we can actually log into the data collector. Now, what that is is simply a database to collect information logged by the Dell Storage Manager. Now, the Dell Storage Manager with the data collector allows for enterprise-wide management as well as cross-platform replication, so that is a requirement. So we will need to enter the appropriate credentials and host IP of the data collector, and then click Login. Now, as we mentioned, the user interface will allow for multiple storage devices to be managed. Now, getting around the Dell Storage Manager, there are several options here. On the left side is our navigation panel. This is where you select storage, servers, replications of live volumes, monitoring, thresholds, and so on. So right now, we're going to click on Add Storage Center to pull this wizard up, which gives us the opportunity to enter in the host name, username, password, credentials for the SE series array that we want to monitor. Once we click Finish, we will add that array into the Dell Storage Manager. Once complete, we will see a summary tab indicating the capacity of the array, any alerts if there's any, and then you have multiple tabs here which allow you to get more information about that array. 
Now this will be our destination array, so we need to actually add our PS series array. To do that, we'll click on the navigation panel on the left here on Dell Storage, and then simply add PS group. Here we'll also enter the appropriate credentials to log into that PS series group, then click Finish. Similar to what we did when we added the SE series array, the PS series group will actually come back with a summary page providing us capacity and status. Now we need to configure the iSCSI connections for replication. Once you have your arrays added to the Dell Storage Manager, you simply right click on the array. In this case, we're going to right click on the PS group we just added. Click on Actions, Replication, and then Configure iSCSI Connections. Here in the wizard, you will be prompted to select the correct destination SE Series Array, also known as Storage Center. So you can see the serial number for that storage center, its IP address, and the version of software running on that storage center. Click Next. In the Configure iSCSI Connection Wizard, now you select the fault domain on the target array, which is the SE Series Array, that you want to replicate over. You also have a several other options here. You can actually change this pool if you happen to have more than one, as well as change the delegated space if you'd like. In this case, I would like to increase my delegated space. This is used for the PS series array for the space available for replication. At this time, we need to select one fault domain for replication. Click Finish. Now, you can configure iSCSI connectivity between the SE series and the PS series. However, it's not needed if you've already configured it one direction. It just simply needs to have one or the other configured. But we'll go ahead and go through the wizard just so you can see that. Uh, similar to the PS series, we click on the storage center and then the actions and then replication and then configure iSCSI connections. You will get the target name. In this case, it will be the PS series array. And that's the PS group, IP address, and the version. And then we click next. And you will get the warning indicating that the iSCSI connection exists between the selected arrays. Do you want to modify? In this case, we don't need to modify that, so we'll just click No and click Cancel. And that's really all there is to it. We just demonstrated how to configure an iSCSI connection between the PS series and SE series array. Thank you for your attention during this video. Please join me in part two where we show replication between the PS series and the SE series array.